Erik, you're one of the editors on a recent special issue focusing on urban ecosystem services. Now, why is it important to look at ecosystem services in the urban context? First of all, I'd say that ecosystem services, they provide good targets for sustainability work and things like resilience assessment. And even though cities are dependent on resources from outside city boundaries, things like food, um, there are still things we need to have provided locally close to where we live. Things like recreational opportunities, uh, opportunities to enjoy nature, get a sense of place, um, and other such more kind of intangible benefits of having close access to nature. And a lot of the articles in the issue talk about cultural ecosystem services. What does that mean? Well, cultural ecosystem services, they can be a quite varied bunch of things, but they are the less tangible benefits we derive from nature, such as I mentioned recreation, perceived well-being, sense of place, spiritual connections to nature, um, all those kinds of less direct and perhaps less obvious things, but still things that are very important for our everyday life and our personal well-being. And why is it important to look at those? I think these are some of the things that are kind of shared between all cities. We'll find in different parts of the world, in some places we still need other kinds of ecosystem services like food production also in cities which is not maybe so much the case in Europe, North America but these other less tangible things, the cultural ecosystem services they are something that everyone will need and that we will have to focus on in all cities. And this uh, research that you present in the special issue and also call for needs to be furthered um, how do you see it can feed into management and planning in, in practice? First of all, cultural ecosystem services, I'd say it can be used more as a platform for working with these issues because if we look to all these different values and meanings that we find within cultural ecosystem services, they provide a way to include more people in the discussion about urban green areas and about ecosystem service provisioning in urban areas. So just acknowledging that will be one first step. And then in the special issue we also present ways for understanding and working with a more systems approach to cities and ecosystem service provisioning, both a systems and more specifically a spatial approach, which kind of takes a very local understanding of ecosystem services and put it in a context and something that hasn't been done much in ecosystem service planning up till today. And it's still not there in practice and I mean we've presented a theoretical foundation for this but it's something that needs to be reformatted and tested to, you know, before we know exactly how we can use it in practice.